Welcome once again to another edition of Good Books. I'm your host this week, Dr. John Cook, and with me today is David Dillett, calling from Australia. His book is The Valentine Prophecies, and uh, we'll talk about the subject matter in a moment. I actually looked on the back for a biography, and what I found was uh, an explanation of what the prophecies were about. Uh, David considers himself a scribe, and this message is divinely delivered. But I did find a little biography on David, who grew up near the quiet shores of Moreton Bay in a peaceful suburb of Brisbane, Australia. And as a young child, he enjoyed spending his days with a fishing rod in his hands and family dogs by his side. His teenage years brought out a rebellious side highlighted by throwing rotten tomatoes at houses and attempting to destroy neighbors' letterboxes with fireworks. At age 17, he met the love of his life. While in Sydney, they soon married and began their family with the birth of a lovely baby girl. David returned to Brisbane with his new family and began a career with the police force. After many active policing roles, he left the police force to enroll in the university and trained as a teacher. David also enjoyed success as an entrepreneur and a business owner. So that's a little bit of biography about our author, David. Welcome to the program. Good morning, John. Very pleased uh, to be with you. I'd like to start since this is a, a, a very important work for people to get the word about, I'd like to start with the call. Uh, you talk a little bit about how you were anointed by God to deliver this message. Mm-hmm. And uh, yes. there, there were signs in your life that you pointed to in the introduction. Uh, uh, there was a, a case where a couple of guys who assaulted you were later killed in a car crash, uh, some other things like that. You want to talk a little bit about that? Yes. Yes, yeah, so, uh, there were a number of things, John, and um, and these things just started to impact and, and shake me up quite a bit, to be truthful. Um, I just wondered, who on earth was this God and why was this happening to me? Uh, or was it normal and just happening to everybody? Um, I had a situation policing where I couldn't, uh, couldn't find an offender who had jumped bail and it just kind of got under my skin and I started to cry out to God and for months I prayed and and asked him um, whether he would find them because he clearly knew where they were or where this uh, individual was and and um, and then a name just lit up in my mind one time when I was in the uh, in the police office to to ring a poli- particular uh, police station and I just couldn't believe it I thought no, it's my imagination, and and a uh, a couple of uh, couple of weeks went past, and I and I phoned that uh, station. I said, "What a pity, you know. Like, uh, wasn't that long ago, and we uh, we had that guy in the cells, and yeah, so things like that happened, and and I just sort of beat myself up over that, and I went back to praying and apologising to God for being such a, a spiritual dope and uh, being so faithless and. Yeah, so God ended up uh, doing the same thing for me uh, a while after that. This guy wasn't having a uh, a very good time staying out of cells, and he uh, he got back into mine. So things things like that just made me realise, um, uh, for whatever reason, God was very open and very active, and it uh, it caused me to actually ask God to to go away because I felt so close, so undeserving, and it was just pretty uh, pretty freaky. It was something new, but thank you, God, that he didn't go away. But there were many, many incidents, John. Mm-hmm. And the the book that you were directed to write, you started receiving yes. those prophecies on uh, Valentine's Day of 2013. The book you were directed That's to write correct. was to, to, to let us know that the end of time is near. That's correct. And um, you've gotten a lot of guidance there uh, with regard to that. One of the things that, that came to you early on is that you, you like so many of humans, are willing to admit um, have been a sinful and weak man, and you've been abusive and arrogant and proud at times, but God chose you for this anyway. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm certainly an extremely ordinary person. I'm probably... You know, I've probably been worse than worse than most, and 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 that just makes me uh, feel terrible when I'm when I'm hanging around with God, so to speak. But God doesn't make me feel terrible, and you know, uh, I guess to be honest, when when God first started to chat on Valentine's Day and 
I didn't know what was coming, but I did know something was because there was just too much happening and accelerating in the lead up to it. Mm-hmm. Um, but when God started to let me know what it was, I just thought, oh my goodness, um, you know, please anything but this, mm-hmm. because I thought this is, um, yeah, this is going to be bad for me. <laughs> so that's the sort of person I. Uh, I am, but because God gets you very excited, and He told me He'd, you know, that He'd be coming so close, and I would really love the whole process of working with Him because there would be so much additional closeness, and and that I certainly have, and I do, and and it's just, it's very exciting. It's really beautiful, and He's just so filled with love every step of the way. But there is a lot of change that God is calling for essentially change back to Christ's original um, purpose and and design for the church the way it was meant to function. Mm -hmm. And and there's a lot of things I'd love to talk about with regard to the the changes that God is recommending for churches, but you knew when you were called to do this that there might be scorn, that there might be derision, that you might be called a liar or crazy, and somehow I guess the love of God sustains you through that concern? Uh, I guess I guess in in some ways, John, I I suppose after waiting for such a long time and just, oh, you know, I was just pregnant with, you know, what is this going to be and can we please start now? And God so often was saying, well, you know, we're not the ones delaying, David, you are. You know, if we give this to you too early then pride is going to overcome you, you'll be destroyed, you you will not be with us in heaven, and we do not do that to the people we choose. We don't destroy the people who we, uh, who we use and who we love. So um, he was telling me, you know, just keep coming closer. Mm-hmm. There's, um, there's a job for you to do right now, keep coming closer. But as the decades pass, you kind of think, please, you know, is this all, all it's ever going to be? But... Yeah, the um, the love for the God I knew, um, the um, the the love for people. I I guess mostly it's just coming close and and the simplicity of the task, John. Because really, okay, there's heaps of abuse and there's heaps of cynicism and scepticism and and all the all the nasty rubbish that gets thrown your way. But amongst it all, there's um, there's just this closeness with with God and this excitement to be part of what he's doing and so close to him in uh, in doing it and being part of something that is such a blessing to everybody to the to the whole world and the timing of it everything happening it's just um, it's a very exciting time for all of us to be alive mm-hmm. the 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 first warning is the concern that some people will cry out on the last day. They didn't know. They weren't guided properly. And part of that has been um, the church has been such a a corporate structure all these years. Uh, You you wrote at one point that God told you books must balance, lights and new carpets are important, more important than my truth, more important than loving and being true to me. Sure. And so... Yeah, it's it's pretty scary. I, I found God... He was um, amazingly loving. He doesn't approach pastors and church leaders in a in a spirit of being condemning or or coming to to beat them up, so to speak. Mm-hmm. He really comes with a great deal of um, uh, of of gentleness and and understanding that we haven't as much created this and and made this and pulled away. We've been we've been born into it, we've accepted it, we've just been in a big puree and um, it's become normal but of course at the beginning what Christ had were the uh, the key ingredients of of never being away from us, speaking through the Holy Spirit, being the director and the head of his church and instead we've, uh, we've made our own way and now we've got 3,800 plus different um, different takes if you like on the one god word on the on the one new testament Mm -hmm. and we're um, and we're reasonably happy most of us with that 
And of course, God is saying, no, you know, you, you gentlemen, you ladies who are heading up and, and running the church, you've decapitated the, uh, the son. Mm-hmm. You have usurped his, uh, his role. You have raised the scriptures, if you like, above God and you've started worshipping them and at the same time you haven't sought the guidance of the Holy Spirit to be able to unravel and uh, and be able to find the way and the Holy Spirit and Christ, you know, they're, they're the only ones who know we don't and we've certainly proven it with all of our uh, just going in all directions, it's it's messy, so much so that we find it hard to uh, connect with young people and cause young people to connect with our churches and they're departing. You know, they they look at us and they say, well, if you guys can't work it out, how on earth can, can I? Mm-hmm. And if you can't get along with each other, well, you know, where is Christ and all that? You know, please, it, it looks like you're expecting me to take something seriously that you're not particularly taking too seriously. So there's all sorts of things that, that God is really trying to call us back to, but essentially it's, it's back to Christ, back to his personal direct guidance uh, through the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, the, the warning is, of course, from, from Scripture, from Revelation, and the, in the final conflict... There will be so many who were not taken, and they'll cry out and give anything to be saved, and want to save themselves from hell. And sorry, John, you're just um, fighting out there a little bit. Uh, your message is that God wants to spare us all, but we have to get the 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 true meaning of of His message. For sure, yes. Um, what is to uh, what is to come? What what essentially God is cautioning and warning because the the uh, the prophecies that He has are in essence urgent warnings mm-hmm. that we listen to Him, that we draw close to Him. And if um, and if we Christ fail to is listen, very soon, and and many most are at risk of being left behind. Mm-hmm. What occurs after Christ comes and departs? To the uh, to the wedding feast with those he knows, what occurs for those who are left behind is um, it's really um, yeah it, it's just pure horror. It's it's really um, really shocking and and so it's either we be refined through the uh, through the prophecies and we listen to God and we and we repent and we and we seek His counsel and we and we make the adjustments, or we are refined afterwards. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, God in His love is uh, is going to see um, probably far more in heaven than we would like to think. But we've got to lose all of our names, and we've got to lose all of our separateness because you know, God is not found in separateness. He He is one, and He wants us to be one with Him. And we really have to practice and exercise on earth under his guidance Mm -hmm. what is in heaven. We have to uh, we have to start and the church and and the way we function within our church is so much meant to be an earthly reflection of what awaits in, in heaven and God is glorified on earth and in heaven through our oneness, through coming together in Christ, under Christ, through uh, through the Holy Spirit, and because His message is to the Jews, the sincere Islamists, to the whole world, believers, unbelievers, to come under Christ. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you had a, a particular message to the the Jewish children and the Islamic children uh, from yeah. God, uh, and and that yeah. was that the Messiah is the way. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. That's that's correct, yes. And and Jesus himself is giving testimony to himself. Uh, the man in white is well known to Jewish societies and to Islamist societies. Um, they might try and deny it. They might be very abusive to those who speak of it. But 
the man in white is is visiting in in visions in dreams many Jews, many Islamists from the bottom to the top of their societies declaring himself to be the Christ and um, and telling them to seek him out mm-hmm. that he is he is the way mm-hmm. um, it's really shaking their societies up so what we can't do he's kind of it's it's like he is doing Paulian type experiences across the Middle East. Mm-hmm. Um, he's just invading their world mm-hmm. in um, in such an amazing way in these end times, and and yet a similar thing to what I'm experiencing from church leaders, either silence, ignorance, or abuse. They're getting the same thing. These people then speak out and start to say, you know, they start to get excited and say, you know, Jesus has visited me. Yeshua has visited me, and and I must seek him out. We must all seek him out. And and because they, um, you know, they just lose everything there is to lose in terms of their society and their family and their community and. And uh, and all of their uh, existing fellowship, they just get completely rejected. So mm-hmm. um, Christ is getting rejected in those societies, and and we have to try and do um, differently mm-hmm. to that. Mm-hmm. We have to uh, try and listen and get past what our history is, what our tradition is, because there is ironically a lot that stands in our way as well mm-hmm. to coming close to God and God alone to coming close to Christ and Christ alone and not letting the church and the programs and the carpets and the and the lights and the careers and everything else get in the way. Mm-hmm. Now in addition to the divisiveness of uh, so many sects with their own um, branding, I guess, of, of Christianity. You also talk about yes. the material world, and you talk about how the iPhone and the camera and the computer tablet and the wristwatch and the jewelry and the makeup and the dresses and the hairstyles and the cars and the Facebook are all distractions that keep us apart, that some people would rather uh, miss heaven than miss a TV show. Yes. Yes, God certainly, he, he aches. He, in so many ways, John, God feels so unloved mm-hmm. um, and and his heart absolutely aches for us mm-hmm. um, he is empty for us it is um, it is a lover who who comes to um, to the one who should love him the most and and we're ignoring you know we're we're so busy it might take an hour or two out of our day to develop and and maintain a, a spiritual intimacy with God, mm-hmm. um, but while he's competing for time against um, tele shows and and everything else that uh, you know that comes between us and him, he uh, he doesn't have a chance. You know, it's it's kind of the um, you know the two minute relationship, the five minute relationship of saying a prayer when you're. Uh, when you're lying in bed and you're about to fall asleep, or, or something like that, and then you turn up to your uh, to your church service on a Sunday morning, and and you fill up and you get yourself excited, but you go home and you quickly empty again, and you go back to um, to an emptiness because really the the excitement and the fellowship of church was never meant to be a replacement for an an exceedingly overflowing joy and peace from God himself inside us, the fellowship of being deeply and intimately acquainted with him Mm -hmm. in in a very passionate spiritual love. Um, Church cannot, and it was never meant to be, something that could compete with what is the individual relationship between us and God. Mm Mm-hmm. So getting to a point where we won't be left behind involves repentance and accepting God's love. Um, But you mentioned some other things that he gives guidance on along the way. One of the interesting ones was about women and um, that uh, even women think they are bigger, better, smarter, faster than men. And I want to remind women that the first to sin was a woman. Um, Be Mm -hmm. careful where you stand. 
uh, men rule over your wife and children, uh, women submit to your husband as the church sure. will submit to Christ. Yes, God, um, God certainly wants to, in the, in the overall bigger scheme of things, he wants men to, to stand up and be men. Mm-hmm. He wants men to lead their, their wives and their children within the home and lead them into an intimate relationship with him. He wants men to lead the way. Mm-hmm. Um, naturally enough, you know, if, if women are, are called and are anointed, um, you know, God has his way. And many women are chosen and they are anointed. They're, they're called into various uh, ministries. But that is, that is God doing that. Um, God is essentially saying, look, men or women, if you are not called of me, stop what you're doing. Mm-hmm. If you haven't heard from me, if you don't have an intimate relationship, go away and get one. Mm-hmm. Because he doesn't want people who are just academics. He doesn't want people who are trying to preach from a book and that's all they've got. Mm-hmm. He wants us to be able to um, be one with him and be able to teach others and lead others so that those who are the senior sheep in the flock can actually lead because they know the voice of the Good Shepherd Mm -hmm. and they know that they are known. They know what they have and and they're walking in faith, in trust, in confidence in in the one who is unseen Mm -hmm. rather than walking by sight learning how to how to minister, how to build up churches, how to imitate other successful, in inverted commas, um, pastors. And, and God essentially is trying to redefine what we call success in the church because it has become a bit like a business. Mm-hmm. And some men, some women, they aspire to be somebody and the church is a vehicle and a platform for becoming somebody, whereas um, God wants us to be one with him. Mm -hmm. And whether we're in a a formal position or not, to be one with him and to enjoy the fellowship both now and eternally of uh, of that relationship. It's not about showing off or being being special in a worldly sense. Yes, I appreciated your referencing uh, Mother Teresa as lifting up God as opposed to lifting up some institution. Uh, I think yes. that's, that's quite accurate uh, about her life for sure. Well, let's talk about some of the teachings. Uh, God gave you some words about baptism. What would you say is most important about that particular lesson? Um, yes, well, well God, um, as, as, he, uh, as he refers to in his word, it is the, the ignition, it is the coming together. It is when we encounter the word spiritually within us, the divine word. And, um, and he plants his seed. It's the initiation, it's the consummation, it's the, the, the beginning of, um, of the development of the new baby. Mm-hmm. And while we're inclined to say, oh no, it's political and it causes trouble, so you can get baptized or sprinkled or whatever that's that's not important just get into relationship with god but but god is saying hey listen kids um it just so happens that what i have written is important and i did mean it and i you know it's offensive to me if you call it political or if you call it minutia or you know don't call what i've given you unimportant look what i've said about it and simply do it but we've uh, we've got traditions and and we've uh, got separation uh, between the uh, the various groups over baptism and god is saying no Mm -hmm. do it you may not understand the significance of it that's okay you don't understand me um you know i'm god you know you are the little kids, you mm-hmm. know, just approach it in the simplicity and say it's written, God wants it, do it, see what happens. You know, it's, um, 
God really wants us to uh, be far humbler than we've been mm -hmm. and to be the little children that um, have the hearts and the minds of the little children and be very receptive and very keen regardless of truly being able to intellectualize it and lock it right down and define everything of God but to approach it as, uh, as little children and receive the blessings. Mm -hmm. we're, we're running out of time, and there's no way we're going to cover every topic I wanted to cover, David, and I'm sorry about that. Uh, uh, there's some talk no on, problem, on sin I wish to get to, but I, I think the most important thing is to give us some guidance on how we can return to what God truly wants us to be. You talk about following the guidance of Holy Spirit, that Christ left the Holy Spirit yeah. behind for his disciples, and we've really gotten away from that. Maybe that's the most important topic to finish with. It, it certainly is. It certainly is the most important um, part, of, uh, part of what God is bringing to this earth, John. Um, he wants uh, churches and pastors and, and all, all the members of churches to, to be able to get together, to be able to sit down honestly, prayerfully, to repent, to apologize, um, to not go on a witch hunt, to not go on a blame game. This is not what it's about. We are saved by the blood of Christ, and right now we stand as his children, and he is approaching us as his children, saved and, and forgiven. So he wants us to just put that aside and appreciate that we're operating as family. But he wants the, uh, the churches to come together to be able to pull apart what they believe and compare it, get back to the Word, and to actually see what is there from man and what is there from God. Throw away what is there from man and lift up and retain everything from God. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's one aspect, to be able to appoint people as, as it was done in the first century um, under the guidance, under the direction of the Holy Spirit, whether people um, choose to draw lots or, or roll die or, or whatever they might um, choose to do to prayerfully and faithfully allow the Holy Spirit to make choices. And, and God pretty much cautions that we might be rather surprised by those who are appointed to lead in the spiritual senses. It might be different to the person who is the senior pastor, and it may not necessarily displace the senior pastor, but there may be people who are appointed as those who um, are closely in touch with the Holy Spirit and who are walking and talking with God so that they become the eyes and the ears, so to speak, to make sure that the church is protected and, and comes back under everything that, that pleases God, everything that Christ desired for his church. Mm -hmm. So um, going through that, um, that sort of process, um, beginning again, mm -hmm. um, making sure that church leaders especially have that sort of time because in their day, so many church leaders are, are worn out, they're depressed, they work so hard, they do so much, so much is expected but actually um, structure into their day and say you will have these hours. You will sit alone one-on-one, -on -one. the phone won't ring, nobody will, nobody will disturb you and you will have this time to get close to God. You know, some, some people, some men and women, they get quite close to God while they're in seminary, while they're going through their, their, their preacher school. I, I'm sorry that we're out of time. Uh, we've been talking with David Dellett, the author of The Valentine Prophecies. Uh, it's, it's a book that talks about uh, hearing God's voice and a, with a spirit of conviction to come over the world. Uh, you've been listening to Good Books Radio, which is on four times a week on Public Radio 88 FM, underwritten by audiobooks.com. And if you miss us there, you can catch us on Facebook on the Good Books Radio page. I'm your host, Dr. John Cook. Thanks for listening. 